What's up, everybody? Welcome to Morning Talks with Ro in the afternoon. I'm about to play an, maybe an unknown artist. I hadn't known about them until I heard this song. I really like it. I love the arrangement, right? It's kind of dope. No Name is the artist, I think. The name of the EP or mixtape. Telephone, spelled with an F. Got my morning afternoon drink. Letting people kind of populate and say, What's up? Hey, y'all, welcome to the conversation. Welcome to Morning Talks with Ro in the afternoon. Shadow box dance in the dark of me, this resurrected agony, this apathy. So I put on some of the to until everybody kind of started populating. Playing by the river, my body delivered. When I die, 27 rabbits. How you feeling? Drop your, drop how you feeling in here with an emergency. Welcome to the conversation, y'all. I'm good, Christopher. I'm about to go to the gym soon. We got another show tonight at the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. It's been going great. Hey, Ebony. Hey, Beverly and Trey. Curtis. What up, y'all? Hey, Kevin. Uh -oh, okay, somebody's tired. Linnell is tired. People are putting how they feel in the chat using an emoji. Oh, you at the circle of sisters? That's what's up. Bless up. It was a good day, wasn't it? Great wisdom. Hey, Antoine. Trey's feeling good today. How's everybody feeling? Drop it in with an emoji. We are live, Robert. What up? Uh, I tippy toe on the tightrope, leaning on green every go be a dice roll. I'm feeling a feeling, her mind said a feeling. I got two patch foods, gold on my gum, and they got rich out my tongue. Come on, throw on the tightrope. I'm vibing. My grievances is as a lady, the night set like a legion shout. Kevin's tired too. <laughs> okay, wake it up, baby. Okay. Hey, y'all. That is No Name is the artist, I believe. It's on a mixtape called Telephone. I must have, like, scoured the internet trying to find that song. Because I was like, listen to this arrangement. It's so dope to me. Ebony's feeling cool. Oh, sick. Antoine, you feeling sick? Hey, Everett. Bless up, Christopher. <laughs> hey, Shakaris, am I saying your name correctly? That's so cute. <laughs> Bless up, Tasha. Welcome to the conversation, everybody. This is Morning Talks with Ro in the afternoon. I still got my morning drink. How y'all feeling? I, you know, today is a really interesting day because I don't know what I even want to talk about. Um, so much so to the point where I just decided to get on here because I felt like I just wanted to be consistent with you all. I just wanted to show up and maybe just showing up is good enough, you know, maybe just showing up and, and exchanging with you and um, um, just being available to you and talking about whatever you want to talk about could be very powerful or could just be e even healing for the both of us just because we're in each other's presence and we're making space for each other. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But I just decided to get on here and um, talk, morning talks with Ro, right? Um, a lot of things have been coming into my space for growth. Uh, a lot of it is spiritual. What started me on this journey wasn't necessarily intellectual. Even though I'm a very, I would say, intellectually driven person, 
uh, I approach things logically, I still can be a little airy fairy too, right? This is my balance. Um, but the thing that got me started, if you will, going down the rabbit hole of knowledge, right? Taking the red pill out of the matrix <laughs> was spirituality. Um, it started at 18 years old, um, coming out of Chicago, coming up, you know, uh, in my traditional Christian uh, church and wanting to expand the dialogue with God, right? And, and, and understand way more about it um, than I knew to ask for in the moment. But I was so, so hungry. Uh, even so hungry at one point that I was willing to put my career on hold um, to search for God. Y'all remember that movie, um, Contact with Jodie Foster? And remember, uh, it was in 1996, because I remember that was a very, very pivotal year. 95 started my, my journey down the rabbit hole, if you will. But 96 was super pivotal. And when I saw that film, I was like, oh, I want to know. I want to know who's God. What is God? Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? And that started this, this journey. So this didn't just come up for me yesterday. You know what I mean? As far as like diving in, uh, being all intrigued with the way that the human mind works, being intrigued with the human condition, how we're set up emotionally, spiritually, how to, as they call it, use life hacks to learn how to break strongholds over your life, uh, break yourself out of patterns, um, you know, look at life from a more enlarged or expanded perspective so I don't get swallowed up in, 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 in one point of view or something that's so narrow and, and limited that I can't live more fulfilled. So recently I got um, reconnected to a spiritual teacher that um, I, when I first read one of her books, um, her name was is Marianne Williamson. You guys familiar with Marianne Williamson? I got her one of her most powerful books because she even said she was in a certain space when she wrote it, and I'm just finding this out now. And um, when I read it, it was the first book I read, over 200 pages in like two days. Oh, I ate that book up, okay? And I just got reintroduced to her in her space right now as she has matured and grown and, you know, become more human and more teacher and student and all. And man, has it opened up yet another space for my growth, you know? So um, if there's any questions that you guys have of me for yourself, for me, for us, let's throw it out there and, and see what kind of deliciousness we can encounter today. I, I got a feeling it could be real powerful but we'll see, right? Let me see what y'all are saying before I, um, we move on. Hey, y'all, welcome to the conversation. Hey, Tasha, uh, Robert, <laughs> Shanika's in the spot, Tanya's here, Carnesha, Robert's feeling good, bless up. Nashua, what up, baby? Did I just see Joseph Cannon? Hey, babe, Teresita's in here. Hey, baby, it's good to see your name. Good to see you too. Oh, Joseph, very proud of you. I'll be in the Vegas next Monday for the week. Awesome. Hope to cross paths with you. Awesome. Let me know. You Maybe you can come out to the show. For those of you who don't know, uh, we're doing a short residency here at the Paris Hotel for the I Love the 90s show. It's really fun. Actually, it's a really good show. Uh, a lot of amazing groups are going to be coming through here. And this week, we are here with Kid and Play and Rob Bass and some really, really talented performers in the I Love the 90s dancers. So if you're in town, come check it out. Come have a good time. Uh, we encountered someone last night and she just could not <laughs> get out of her space of feeling like she had the best time ever. I was like, wow, that's so dope. So uh, come out if you want to have a good time. Hey, Tanya. Thank you, lady. Good evening, Jamie. So is there any question that you guys have of me uh, before I get out of here? I'm making myself available. Like I said, right now, uh, the, the, the spiritual aspect of me, I guess, was ready to stretch and grow because I've dived in in another way and it's opened up yet another space. What? There's always more, you guys. There's always more, right? There's always yet another layer to learn from, to grow in. Yikes, right? Okay, Tasha says, it's so amazing that you're singing with En Vogue. My question is, how were you able to get in contact with En Vogue? Well, you know, I, I, it happened years ago. I used to be a Mouseketeer as well. And my one of my Mouseketeer buddies, his name is Ricky Luna. Um, he's killing it too. He may not be on the front of the scene like the rest of my counterparts, you know, uh, 
Christina and Brittany and Justin, but he has been killing it. Um, Latin Grammy, um, produced songs for the World Cup, like, okay, somebody, uh, I was surrounded by the best kept secret, okay, you guys? And he called me up years ago to sing a demo uh, for something that he was doing, and this producer that he was working next to after the session was like, I don't know if you'd be interested in something like this, but in Vogue is looking for another member. He introduced me to Denzel Foster, one of the founders of the group. Denzel heard my music, heard my writing, was like, I want to fly you to the bay to meet the girls. We met each other, and it was like, we clicked. That was it. You know what I mean? It worked out. Kedrick. Okay. Um... Let's see, Ebony says, I'm going to bring Jaden to the show in Atlanta next month. That's what's up. We're going to have a show in Atlanta, you guys, on December 8th. Is that, I think, no, 7th. December 7th in Atlanta. If you're in Atlanta, come come hang out with your girls. Um, Linnell says, how do you stay motivated through failures? Hmm. How do I stay motivated through failures? Several several ways I stay motivated through failures. One, my perspective, right? I know that I've picked up a phrase that I love, fail forward. Failure is a part of success. I've embraced that idea that failure is a part of success. And so because I've embraced that failure is a part of success, it's what grooms you for success. It's what builds character so that success, success can be sustained Right? Because if everything's all peachy and fabulous, what will give you the fortitude to maintain and sustain success? Right? If everything goes well, when you do hit a roadblock, because life goes in seasons, it goes in cycles, everything's not always going to be fantastic, right? What's going to what's going to shore you up and, 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 and shape you to be able to handle that and press forward? So I guess I've embraced the idea that I know failure is a part of my growth. Failure is a part of what will enable me to to be successful and maintain it. And then also. Um, I've created an incredible support system around myself and the support system doesn't necessarily mean people like physical people, a uh, support system could be a mentor from that's already passed and gone on. You know, I've learned a lot from Jim Rohn. I've learned a lot from Earl Nightingale. I've earned a lot. I mean, I learned a lot from Malcolm X. I learned a lot from Martin Luther King. I've learned a lot from so many different authors and, um, um, poets and builders and thinkers and architects that have lived before and that are living now. And I just piecemeal, you know, I just, I just keep picking up little nuggets along the way. And that's what keeps me, uh, and, and studied other champions and see that other champions, people who have excelled at what they love to do, they failed too. How did they make it through? You know, what did they think about that uh, situation? What was their mindset? How are they set up emotionally? You know, what are some of the ways that they do things or think or that they, they maneuver in life that can I can add to my own personal arsenal? So I've always been a student in life and I do realize the truth in I am the best project I could ever invest in. And so I do that. I hope that helps. Let's see what y'all saying. Um, love, love, pause. Thank you, Mark. Yes, I learn new things every day about myself. Bless up, Shanika. But failures are life's lessons. Bless up, Beverly. Kimberly, yes, hey. Uh, Tasha says, I'm still working on my singing career, going back in the studio to record two singles. Bless up. All the best to you with that. Failure is the sand in your oyster. Always a pearl that will be, I like that, will be the end result. I like that analogy. Uh, Shakaris, are you single? What are you looking for in a man? Ha! Ah, uh, yes, I'm single. Um, well, I'm looking for a few things, but you know, as I continue to mature and fine tune uh, myself, I, I realize that it's important for me to align my values with him. So I'm looking for certain values. In him, of course, I want to be. I got to be attracted to him. He's got to be attracted to me, and 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 um, you know, I guess show regard for me in a certain way. But values is big, so that's what I look for. Most importantly, um, let's see. Linnell says, "Thank you. This is very helpful. Bless up. I'm glad. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Tasha." 
Okay, I haven't gotten those questions. That's dope. Uh, I am the best project I can invest in. Church, bless up. You know it, Nashua, right? It's just, man, man. And I'm so grateful for my investment in myself because my quality of living has up-leveled because I do the work on myself. I'm not just sitting here waiting for life to happen to me. I am happening to life. You know, I'm happening in life. And when and, and when I hit those old funky seasons, I'm not wasting my seasons no more. When I hit my last winter that whooped my tail, <laughs> I did not waste it. I did not waste it. I was studying. I was taking these principles and applying them. I was not just, you know, picking up knowledge and sounding cool and smart. Like that serves, what purpose is that going to serve if it's, if you're not practicing it and using these tools in your life? So I was like studying and then I would go and apply, study, apply, study, apply, ask for help, study, for apply, apply, ask for help, work out, get up early, go to bed late. Like I was like, but I was like, it won't be like this always. It won't be like this always. That's what kept me going. Cause I was tired. I was tired, I was stressed, I was scared, but I did not waste my winter because I know that seasons change. Now, what that new season rounding itself looks like is up to the decisions we make now. It's up to the new choices we make. So what new choices are you making in each season that can pre better prepare you for the world ahead and also keep up leveling your living? Even though you might hit another slow place, you're going to hit it differently if you do the self-work. saying hey y'all welcome to the conversation um low base welcome to the conversation if you fa uh, fail to plan you plan to fail hello uh plan out your life bless up robert says do you do a lot of reading how many books a week or a month is reading important to you absolutely reading is important i do a lot of consuming information so sometimes i may not uh, even though I know reading is very um, necessary, it's like lifting weights, right? Like I'll, I, you can listen to a lot of audio books um, and, and, and consume a lot of information that way. I can watch a lot of YouTube videos, watch a lot of YouTube experts and consume a lot of information. But just fundamentally picking up a book and reading is also very important too. Keeps the brain massaged, right? Um, uh, 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 it's like doing push-ups, you know what I mean? Sometimes if you don't use that aspect of yourself, you can lose it. So just reading, uh, it's, it's, it can be calming. It keeps you present and centered. There's a lot of things that reading can almost kind of mirror a, a meditation. Um, so yes, reading is very important. Consuming information is very important to me so that I can have something hopefully um, helpful and insightful to add to a dialogue. You know what I mean? Um, I can keep um, even expanding on my creativity just because I take in more information. You know? Okay. Hey, April. Welcome to the conversation. That's right, Shanika. Tell Low Base what's up, man. He's the bomb. Our writers give us time to think. Yeah. Or our winters give us time to think. Absolutely. Don't waste them. When you're hit sitting in barren land, right? If you're sitting in a place like I remember when, when it felt like, uh, I, you guys have heard me say this before, where it felt like the doors of opportunity were not budging for me. I'm like, what is going on? Am I changing my career? Like, what am I doing right now? And if I am changing my career, then I need to figure this out because I refuse to be unhappy. I was like, I'm not going to live this life unhappy. So what do I need to do? First of all, what choices did I make that has me looking at the results I'm looking at? And then what do I need to do differently? Or what do I need to become more of in order for this situation to shift and in my favor? And sometimes we don't even know what that is. You just got to do the work. You don't know when it's going to end. <laughs> right? Exactly. And you don't know exactly what your, your sweet spot is that you're going to need to do in order for things to shift. You just got to endeavor and commit to doing the work. Because sometimes you don't need know how much work you might need in order for the, sh the, sh the shift to happen. So it's really got to be about the work and, and, and doing better with yourself. And that's what I did. I was like, I don't know how long this is going to last, but it won't last always. And I'm going to do the inner work necessary in order for me to shift this, come out of this, and come out a better version of myself. And then my, my 
experiences are going to be more synonymous with that. My experiences are going to match that because I'm seeing through different eyes. I'm seeing through a different perspective. I've shifted in behavior and pattern that put me here in the first place. Ooh, yes. All right. Hey, Joseph. Um, hey, Terrence. Peace, Tayangas. Beverly says, yep, we are in the ouch season, <laughs> but we are applying everything we can, meeting every day at 10 a.m., praying, believing, and encouraging each other, talking about Scott and I. Bless up to you and Scott. Thank you for that. Love the information. Bless up, Vita. My pleasure. Linnell Everett, I know the perfect book for you to read. It's called The, the Journey, a collection of poems written by Linnell E. Everett. Ha, ha, ha. Bless up. <laughs> Thank you, Linnell, for that book recommendation, and congratulations on getting it published. Oh, good. Good. Is there anything else you guys want to ask of me before I run to the gym and uh, get it in before tonight? These are some good questions. Even though it's a short session, there's some good nuggets falling out in here. I hope you guys are taking this. And when you hear this stuff, you know, take these, this resource. Take these resources that you get from me, from the people who communicate in the chats. You're getting a lot of good information. Don't just take it in for knowledge. Use it. Practice makes permanent. Practice gives you wisdom. Practice puts you in position to know yourself better. Because, you know, you won't really know how these principles and tools sit with you until you work them in the real world. Until then, it's just kind of like information. But if you work that information, that's, that's a whole other journey ahead. Big time. It's so imperative to practice, practice, practice. That's where this stuff gets good. That's when it gets juicy. Tasha says, I had a chance to see y'all in concert two years ago at the uh, Garrett Coliseum in Montgomery, Alabama. Y'all did a great, awesome job, and I enjoyed it. My sister, thank you. Thank you. Nashua says, but small steps are steps too. Absolutely. And I love you for blessing me up. Let me know. But what you say, but let me know you. I'm uh, mad proud of you. Thank you, Nashua. Thank you. Uh, when y'all come into North Carolina, not sure. It's not on the uh, books right now. Not on the books right now. So I hope you guys got some, uh, some good support from our conversation right now. The name of that book that I mentioned earlier is Mary Ann Williamson's book, A Return to Love. It's an awesome read for me. Could be where I was in my developmental stage in my life. It was an amazing, amazing read for me. Uh, let's see, what's a good way to divert someone from always saying negative things? Um, I would say it's more about you than them because we're not here to change them, right? Just us. So what shift can you make? Is it that you need to redirect your attention and focus on something else? Is it that you don't need to entertain that conversation? Or do you need to shift you can, maybe you're going to talk about that conversation, but you change the language that's being used in that conversation by the way you approach it, right? Or um, um, I think the shift happens in you. And when they see, like, it's kind of a loaded question, but the shift happens with you, not necessarily them. If you want to ask me something a little bit more specific, let me know. Uh, let's see, Trey, absorb it like a sponge. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, it's my pleasure to connect with you today. I'm about to run down to the gym and get it in. Um, this was Morning Talks with Ro in the afternoon. You know how I do it. Get it in where you can fit it in sometimes. Um, if there's ever a time uh, you guys want to talk about a, a specific topic that you want me to bring to the table, let me know ahead of time. Send me something in my private message box or go to askro at gmail.com, A S K r-h-o at gmail.com just so I can put it on the brain and maybe if, if it deserves a little bit more thought and time I can spend some time with it and bring you something uh worth hearing <laughs> right okay Shanika I'm gonna read your message and then I'm out the last couple of months I have been really stressed out I'm going uh gaming from lessons while going through it gaining and applying the wisdom and knowledge of coach Rowe bless up baby I know you have been, and you've been doing an excellent job. 
you have been doing an excellent job, especially in, in light of the fact that you are facing physical pain, which can, you know, really be a distraction and you're still applying yourself. You're still practicing the principles. You're still going hard in the pain. That's how we do it. We do what's hard. Because it's not going to always be easy. As a matter of fact, it's going to take some grit. Sometimes in order for you to be prepared for what you're asking for, you need to develop a certain level of grit and mental fortitude and stick to itness in order for you to be blessed beyond where you are right now. Some people want it so easy. They don't, they don't know the level of sacrifice that comes with some people's seeming success. They don't know the level of sacrifice that's come with with some people's growth. How'd you get that growth? Oh, you sound so smart. Why? What did they have to do to get that smart? What did they sacrifice to get to that space? What did you see somebody happy now, but do we know what they went through to even get to that space of happiness and fulfillment? The level of sacrifice that comes with that sometimes, a lot of the times. And sacrifice could be stepping away from people or things for a certain amount of time in order for you to grow. You can't take everything with you. You got you can't go clubbing all the time if you're ready to make a shift in certain another area of your life. You know what I'm saying? Like some some things you have to leave behind in order to make the shift. And some people don't want to do that. Want they want to take all their comfortabilities with them. And it can't work like that all the time. It doesn't work like that a lot of the time if you're looking for real change. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for the well wishes. Love you and have an awesome workout and show. Thank you, Tanya. I love you back. How long will y'all be in Vegas till November 19th? Any plans on writing a book, doing a motivation video, or conducting a seminar? Yes, uh, I am writing a book right now, music-wise, with my partner out of Amsterdam. It's a holistic approach to success in the music business. However, the things that I'm writing about, everybody can benefit from, you know? And then I will be making plans to write another book. I am finishing up a virtual course that will be offered very soon that's going to be talking about what we're talking about today, keys to successful living. And um, yes, uh, I am gonna start doing more talking. It's just that we work so much when I'm on the road, so some of these opportunities I'm having to pass on, um, but I am being prepared for that. I know that. Shanika Bones, you are an inspiration. Yes, she is. Hold on, I got something in my <laughs> We can always use more writers. Yes, you're beautiful. I thank you. Uh, being a light. Thank you, Nalaja. Bless up, baby. So true. Thank you. You are too. Aw, you guys better support each other and love each other. Okay, send and love your way. Until next time. Bye, y'all.